Welcome everybody, this is Santo Romano here with another video tutorial. This time what we're going to be talking about is working with HTML5 video, but we're going to be working with HTML5 video in an interesting way. What we're going to attempt to do, as you can see here, is to take that video and have it act as a full screen background. So this is full screen background video. Right now I'm using a video that I require acquired from Wikimedia and it's just a video uh, taken from NASA of the Sun and some really interesting things that are going on at the time of this recording and as you can see here the little text that I've included with this is on top of the element and it just says in praise of heliocentrism so it's directly related to the video that's showing here that's just to prove a point that you know if you're going to be using video as a background as I'm doing right now it should be something that complements the text and not just something that looks cool or pretty or something like that so that's what we're going to be attempting to do and I'll show you how to do it it's really not as hard as you might imagine all you're going to need are some video files and a couple of formats for those video files and I'll walk you through the process of how to get this working in an HTML5 environment with a little bit of help from CSS so I'm going to just squeeze this down a little bit as you can see here we'll still be able to see the video and stuff when I do check on it but I want to jump on over to the text editor that I'm using at the moment it's sublime text so within sublime text here you can see that I've got the general structure of what I'm doing there's a div that's got the wrapper and ID and that one actually has all of the text that I've included in that small little example that we were just talking about. The CSS is just a basic style.css. Currently, right now, you can see that without any information dealing with the video, here I've just got a body tag selector that is set to a background color that's a sort of darkish gray. So those elements are in place, we're ready to go. How do we now include our video into these different areas? So there's a couple of things that we're going to do, but first and foremost, I think what I'd like to do is to go into the HTML, in this case, the index.html file, and in the body section, we're going to add our HTML5 information. So, first and foremost, let's put in the video tag, which is a new HTML tag with HTML5. And actually, I'm going to close that video tag right away so that we just don't forget. Now, once we're inside there, we're going to add some of our source information in just a second. But before we do that, let me show you a couple of attributes that we oftentimes will associate with HTML5 video and specifically attributes that are going to help us in this little example. First thing I want you to do is to create the autoplay attribute. And this is going to, as it suggests, you know, just automatically play this as we open up the file. Now that's great, and in most situations it's going to work perfectly for us. However, do keep in mind that autoplay is not a function that works on the vast majority of mobile devices. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but in that case what we need to do is to prepare an option other than auto-playing this video. So we'll get to that in a second. A uh, second attribute that I want you to add is the loop attribute, which, as the name suggests, will cause this little video to loop. And the keyword there is little video. I've edited the video that I'm using here so that it's rather short and it's under 5 megs. Now, if you are working with a video that is really, really heavy, remember, bandwidth certainly still is a big deal nowadays, and you should try to limit your work to, I don't know, short videos looping repetitive videos um, you know maybe 30 seconds in length or something like that and that will allow you to have your video be relatively small once you do in fact compress it now that we got the loop in there I'm also gonna ask you to say muted and the reason being is we don't want to freak anybody out when video starts playing and blam blaring audio starts you know assaulting people's ears we want to keep this really subtle and really discreet so if you really needed to have some audio in there or something like that then certainly you know if you're capable you can write a little bit of JavaScript that will allow you to press play and stuff like that 
and you might also notice that this video is not going to have any controls. If we did want controls, we would just write out the attribute controls. But in this case, I don't want any control or anything like that happening. I just want it to act as a nice backgrounded element. All right, so with those things in place, we're pretty much ready to go. But there is one other attribute that I want to introduce, and that's called the poster attribute. Well, unlike the other ones, the poster is going to require that we actually give it a value. So in here, that poster, I'm going to say, go into the images folder that I've got prepared in my root, and I want you to use a JPEG that I've prepared. So it's called sunnasa.jpg. Now, this JPG file, this JPEG file, is actually the first frame of the video that I'm using. Now, why am I doing that? Well, it's quite simply because if there is a situation where we don't have the capability of automatically playing this video, then the thing that's going to show up is this. It's the images as a poster. It's going to be there as the first picture that plays. Now, you know, let's say there was some sort of delay or something like that. Well, the poster will show up for a little bit, and then it will easily transition into the playing of the video. That's a beautiful thing, and the reason it is is because, well, you know, there's a seamless transition there. And that's one of the reasons why I suggest that you use for your poster the first frame of your video. Now, the final thing we want to do in here is to actually give this an ID. And the ID that I'm going to choose, it doesn't really matter. You can choose whatever you want, but I'm just going to call this full screen. By doing this, we'll be able to control what's going on inside the CSS once we start mucking around with this particular video. All right, so now that we've done what we need to do to get the video tags in order, what I now want you to do is to determine what the source of this particular video is going to be. So we're going to use the source tag. And that source tag is going to have an SRC, well, an actual source. So we'll put in our SRC. Now, I happen to have some video prepared. It's in a folder called Video, and it's called Sun-NASA. Now, here's the deal. When you're working with HTML5 videos, you might already be aware of, you're going to need to have three different source files. Two will be fine if you, you know, cannot provide all three. So the first one that I'm going to be dealing with is the WebM version. Now notice if you're using WebM, just be clear that there are certain versions of Chrome that may not show the WebM video if it's underneath the other ones, the other sources that we'll be providing. So I generally, just as a, you know, fail-safe plan, I usually put the WebM right up at the top and I suggest you do the same. So let's determine what type this is and of course it's going to be type is equal to video and it's WebM video. Now WebM video is a video format that is going to be supported on most browsers. It's one that is non-proprietary and because of that um, we will only have to deal with WebM. Now the other option for WebM is OGG video. Now OGG video or the Theora codec is a great one to work with but you know now as more and more people are accepting WebM sometimes you don't necessarily need the OGG. Now I happen to have one so I'm going to provide it anyways just in case again as a fail safe approach to this and I'm just going to copy this information here and let me get those tags all set up properly and it's got the same name although the extension on mine is OGV and that's something we'll put in here. And under the type, I'm just going to change this to OGG. Again, another file format that we're going to be working with. After that, I have the format that is going to work in WebKit browsers like Safari specifically, or in Internet Explorer browsers. And that format is MP4. Uh, MP4 is a proprietary method, and hence that's why it works on those browsers. But not to worry, there are different ways of taking an MP4 video and converting it into any of these formats that you see here. And there are plenty of ways to uh, do that online directly. You don't even need to download anything too crazy. So with all of this information now in place, what we do want to do is to address how this is going to look with our CSS. So let's Command-S, save that, or Control-S if you're on a PC. 
And once this thing is saved, we'll go to the style sheet. Now here, directly after my opening body tag, the selector that I'm going to be addressing is the video tag. Now you might have other video tags that you don't want to act as full screen. So I'm going to specifically say any video tag that has the ID of full screen. All right, so now that we've got that in place, what we now want to do is to start determining how this is going to look. So the first thing I'm going to say is position. And the position we're going to apply here is a position of fixed. And the reason we do that is because, well, you know, if something is scrolling, I don't want this video to scroll along with it. So we're just going to set it up like that. Also, we're going to determine where the positioning of this particular object is going to be located. So I'm just going to say on the right hand side, we'll say zero and you could say top or anything else, but I'm just going to say right bottom. And once we are on the right bottom, we can then say zero as well. Then what we need to do is to make sure that this thing stretches out the way I need it. So I'm going to actually give a minimum width of 100% as well as giving it a minimum height of 100% as well. So we've got that in place too. Now once you got your min height and your min width set up, let's set up just a regular width and height. So here I've got a width that I'm going to set to auto and that should automatically get it to be exactly the width that we need it to be, as well as a height value of auto also. And once those two things are in place, we do also want to make sure that this thing is always going to be underneath everything. So I'm going to set it to minus 100 for its Z index. Then what I want to do is to say, well, listen, if there's any browser out there that's not going to understand what the video tag is, and we've done a few things in this CSS file to make sure that certain browsers will support it, but just as the fail-safe fallback method, contingency plan, whatever you want to call it, we're also going to give it a background image. And that background image is going to act as a cover that will show up only if the video is not actually working. So let's come in here and we'll set up background. And in that background, I'm going to determine what a URL is. And the URL that I'm going to be using here can be found not in the CSS folder, so dot dot slash. But then we go into the images folder. And in there, I'm going to use that sun dash NASA JPEG that we also used when we were doing it inside of the poster method. So once we're in there, I'm also going to say no repeat. And once we got that in place, we're now going to do the last thing, which is we're going to determine background size. And background size is a new CSS3 feature. And this is set to cover, which will do exactly what it says, right? It'll cover the background so that whatever the size of the browser window is, this is going to show up the way we want it to. So again, Command S or Control S if you're on a PC. We save that information. We got it working pretty much the way we need. And once you go into your browser and you test it, you can see pretty much what I've got happening right here which is a full screen video. And that video is playing. And notice it's fixed. When I scroll what's happening here on the side, the video doesn't move. It's always fixed in its position. And it's looking just great. This is how you can go about creating your own full screen video in the background or in the foreground, whatever you like. But in this case, it's set to be the background of this simple yet effective HTML page.